Hello lovelies, this is Cory. Welcome to another watercolor tutorial. In my last watercolor video, a friend asked about underpaintings and was wondering if I could expand more on my process for them. Why would I choose a certain color for an underpainting and things like that. So I am going to get into that with this video, talk about my process and kind of how that works. But first I'm going to go over just a little bit of art history to give some background on underpaintings. Underpaintings started as a method in painting in the Renaissance period. Oil painters would put down color on their canvas so that they could have their values of light and dark laid out for them. So basically it would be almost a complete underpainting. You would see the full range of values and see the figures and shapes on the canvas. Oftentimes it would be in one color, although not always. There were some artists who did multicolored underpaintings. I tend to do single color monochromatic underpaintings. But the idea was to lay down these values of light and dark as a guide so that when they painted over it, they could do it in a layered process. So they would lay down very thin glazes, which is basically a uh, oil paint mixed with quite a bit of solvent, so just really thin layers of paint over and over to build up this luminosity. And ultimately some of those bottom layers would shine through and just give it an extra three-dimensional look. So that's kind of the history behind underpaintings. And although they've traditionally been used with oil painting, I think they also work nicely for watercolor. One of the main reasons why I use underpaintings, and I don't always do an underpainting, just sometimes, but they can be very helpful because they help you determine how dark you actually should go with your darkest values. When you have a completely white piece of paper or all white canvas, it's so, so bright, it can actually be a little difficult for your eye to determine how dark you need to go. So as you're painting, you might think, wow, this looks so dark, but then when you have everything filled in, you realize, oh, it's actually not dark enough. So having that initial layer put down can really help you determine, okay, the white just looks really bright, but I am doing the right thing with filling in the lights and darks. So that's kind of how that goes. Also, I use a particular color based on what sort of overall tone I want to give the painting. Master paint, the old masters, as well as painters today, will use a specific color if they're doing a monochromatic under underpainting based on what sort of overall tone they want to give the painting. It really can unify it. So for instance, in this painting, I'm using a manganese blue, which is a really nice, cool blue <clears throat> to give the overall object a cool undertone. If you were doing a <clears throat> really warm type of fall scene, you might do an underpainting in like a rich brown or red so that that sort of warmth would shine through. And even though the underpainting ultimately gets covered up, it does give a unified undertone to the whole piece. So that's what I have to say about underpaintings. I hope that answered the questions. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this painting in particular. So I laid down the, the layers of blue for the underpainting, as you could tell, and then I mixed up a sort of yellow-green-green. Green. And I used <clears throat> cadmium yellow light and sap green to make that. It just worked perfectly for that Granny Smith apple color. And I am using my trusty round size 4 brush that has become my favorite. I use it almost exclusively now. But also because these are smaller paintings. They are 6 inch by 9 inch watercolor. It's the 140 pound watercolor paper. And I don't need a really big flat brush to cover big areas all at once. I can just use the side of the round brush to cover the main object and then use the very tip for those fine details. And then just working in layers, so much of any painting, but particularly realistic painting, involves building up layer by layer. So you start with that underpainting if you so choose, and then just building on top and on top. 
And between each layer, for watercolor specifically, but other paints too, you want to make sure it completely dry. So I did the underpainting, let it completely dry, and then went over with my initial layer, which was about the lightest layer, and of course remembering to maintain my white, not paint over my white spaces so that my highlights will really show up nice and bright. And then you let that dry and then keep going over and over with that and blending it out. And blending it out involves putting a little bit of water and just smoothing everything together. So I'm using both the wet on dry technique where my under layers are dry, but then once I want to smooth things out, I am putting wet paint on top of wet paint. So I filled in the details for the apple and then you've got the shadow. Now I, I actually painted with a real apple in front of me instead of using a reference image. I normally use a reference image, but it was nice to work from life. When you can work from a real object or figure, that is ideal. The only difference is that my apple was on a wood tabletop instead of white, so I did have to do a little bit of guesswork about what sort of color the shadows would be on a white surface. So I made some educated guesses. A lot of time on a white surface you will see the actual color of the object, so later on I do add some green. And here I'm using the flat brush to smooth out the edges. It's just a clean flat brush dipped in water, and then you can see I use my cloth there to, to <clears throat> take up a little bit of the extra water from the paper. And again, that flash, flat brush smoothing things out. I can lay down smooth fields of color very quickly, so this time I did transition to using the flat brush rather than the round brush for the shadows. Put a little bit of brown in there to give it a warm tone and just smoothing it out. And this apple had a lot of soft spots, so I did try to paint all of those in. It was an apple with character, <laughs> so that was kind of fun to do. And yeah, looking at that real object, or if you're using a reference image, looking at the reference image, going a little bit back to the underpainting, thinking, okay, what sort of undertones am I seeing? Is this a really bright, warm object? Do I want to use yellow if it's kind of a desert look? Things like that. So you put your signature, and then you know, last touches, I added just a little bit of detail with the colored pencils, and that was that. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, check out other videos. I'm going to do more watercolor soon. See you next time.